Ladies and gentlemen, we finally have a talent hero tree for the shaman released. It's called Farseer and it's going to include the elemental air restoration shaman specs. I'm going to do a short reaction review, although I've already read through uh, all of these and I know uh, what's going to come. And I'll probably do some more reactions uh, definitely for the rest of the shaman uh, hero talents and maybe for some of the other healing classes. Uh, now, in general, I'm not a big fan of the hero talents. Uh, I'll share why uh, a little bit later in the video. But let's see what the Farseer is going to bring uh, to the table. Keep in mind that I do play Restoration. I play Enhancement, but I don't play much Elemental. So uh, I won't be able to provide like a good amount of comments on how applicable all these talents are to the elemental spec. All right, so uh, everything in this tree is going to revolve around Call of the Ancestors, which means that you can summon uh, a small pet or something like the Groove Guardians of the Druid that will assist you. But uh, whenever you cast a healing or damaging spell, the Ancestor will cast a similar spell. Now, I don't think they'll be, they'll be hitting for the same amount uh, first that uh, the original ones are uh, because then that would be overpowered like you cast a healing surge and then the ancestor also cast a healing surge I mean double the power that's like uh, that's like a hundred percent increased healing right without any other buffs so I would assume that they're probably casting their spells at some reduced uh, effectiveness or something like that uh, but you know, those are some questions that uh, we're probably going to get answered uh, eventually. Now, the other thing is, how do you summon this Ancestors? Primordial Wave for Elemental, which is something you basically cast on cooldown, and Unleash Life for Restoration. So that instantly tells us, okay, this is a rate spec, right? Because you don't take Unleash Life in M+. And this is one of the problems, the small problems I have with this um, trees is that I would not like to see one of the trees for your uh, spec that you're playing to be for, let's say, the rate and the other for M+. Right? This means that there's absolutely no choice because there's okay, there's a couple of nodes that you can you can switch, but uh, other than that, you're given the tree, you have to play around it. That's it, right? You don't have a choice. Um, now there are other ways to summon the ancestors, as we're going to see just uh, in a few seconds, but. Uh, are we going to run Unleash Life in M+. I mean, if those are really overpowered, then of course we are, but I don't think the idea for these things uh, are to be like healing the dungeon by themselves, right? So uh, probably in that case, if they're not very powerful, we're not going to care and uh, we're not going to pick up Unleash Life in uh, M+. So that's like the big problem that I see just straight out of the door. Uh, it's probably going to be great for 8, we don't know about Mythic Plus, but uh, yeah, let's look uh, through the rest of the things. Uh, now, Riptide gains additional charge and heals for 5% more and Lava Burst for Elemental. So that means that we're going to have three Riptides, uh, three Riptide charges that we can use. And that also ties back to the undercurrent talent that you're running in Raid. The more Riptides you have rolling, uh, the more uh, you heal, but for M+, yeah, you know, having two Riptides, great, but uh, I don't think that's that's crucial there. Uh, healing for more, yeah, we'll take that, but other than that, it's like, eh. Um, all right, so let's look into this one. Ancestral last two additional seconds is one of the nodes, and the other node is Riptide has 50% chance to call an Ancestor, and Lava Burst has, uh, casts have 8% chance to call an Ancestor. So um, that means that you can actually summon them even without having the Unleash Life Talent, which is kind of stupid, I would say, because I don't think there's Elemental Shamans that do not run Primordial Wave. So you can always run this tree and you're always going to get the Ancestors, but there are Restoration Shamans that do not run uh, Unleash Life. Right? Uh, so this tree basically uh, locks some nodes in the other tree, which uh, also limits your capabilities and your flexibility. Uh, which is generally, I don't think it's a good thing. But having more Riptides, summoning more Ancestors, that means that you can have like a small army probably rolling into the raid. And there's another note here, which uh, either uh, increases uh, their spells to be 20% more powerful, we don't know 20% on top of what, or uh, after they expire, they have 50% chance to summon another Ancestor. Right, so that kind of, I guess, ties to the Farseer fantasy of uh, Shaman because uh, I think this is what it did in War Warcraft 3. 
Um, I'm personally not going to be a fan of having a, a pets healing for you and the Shaman. And also keep in mind that these are not the Groove Guardians, right? If you summon the Groove Guardians as a Druid, they do their healing and you're just standing there and you're, you know, uh, dancing around in cat form and doing damage. Here, they're casting similar damaging and healing spells, but that means that if you're not casting, they're not doing anything, right? So uh, from that perspective you have to be uh, actually proactive once they're summoned, which also ties back to M+, because in Raid, you're constantly trying to heal and to do something, right? So you'll be casting and they'll be uh, casting similar spells. Uh, also, let's know that it says casting here. What happens if you do a Riptide? It's still a cast, right? So they should duplicate it. But in M+, once you um, summon it, there might be, okay, I guess it's damaging spells too. So we should know this. Uh, damaging spells, not only healing, so if you're doing damage, they should duplicate it. So that, that's actually a big plus for, for M+. All right, uh, moving down, um, when uh, Ancestor is called, they reduce the cooldown of Riptide by 2 seconds for Restoration. Again, that's very, very nice rate. Uh, I don't, if you have 3 charges in M+, I don't think you care at all for that cooldown. It's probably always going to be available and up. Uh, but for 8, I guess uh, that's that's fine. And then uh, for um, Elemental, they reduce the cooldown of your Fire or Storm Elemental by 10 seconds. So every time they're cold, uh, if that includes the procs from the um, Lava Burst, that's actually huge because you can get huge cooldown reduction to your Elemental. Um, so there's a little bit of discrepancy here. Like it sounds that this is really good for... Uh, Elemental, and then for Restoration, I guess it's fine for it. Definitely, we don't care in M+. Um, yeah, so uh, again, this is this is uh, combining two classes into the same tree is generally, I think, a bad idea because they have to do a lot of things like this. Uh, like, why do you have two different classes in one tooltip, right? Or two different specs. Anyway, just me um, Munching around. So, uh, increases the maximum health strong by 25 and increases your maximum mana by 5%. This is the Snowed. And increasing your mana for um, and Restoration is actually not bad because the Resurgence talent restores mana based on your maximum mana. So, uh, not only you're getting a few additional casts by having more mana, but your Resurgence is going to uh, give you a little bit more mana back. So I, I guess that's that's an okay note. That's an okay talent to have. Uh, then we have the Spirit, Spirit Walker's Momentum. If you pop your Spirit Walker's Grace, you basically extend the duration up to a maximum of 4 seconds if you're casting spells. Good note, good talent. Um, nothing to say about it. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's uh, something that uh, is going to help you once you use that talent. Not big impact. Then that's a defensive note. Uh, reduces the cooldown of Nature's Guardian by 10 seconds and causes it to heal for additional 5% health. Um, so that's great passive defensive uh, increased um, value. And then Earth Shield has an additional 3 charges and heals you for 25% more. Now, for Restoration, my question is, it says heals you for 25% more. Does it heal if you cast Earth Shield on somebody else? Does it heal them for 25% more? Because if that's the case, this is going to be overpowered. But if it's only you, which I guess is my suspicion, uh, because it's supposedly a defensive node, uh, then for Restoration, that's that's not going to be huge. Um, I guess uh, because as enhancement, I actually run uh, Earth Shield and I keep it on myself on some uh, hard encounters and it heals for a little bit. I guess it's going to be the same for Elemental, so you can use that for a lot of passive constant healing, or you can reduce your Nature's Guardian. Um, but uh, other than that, having two additional charges, I guess it's it's an okay defensive uh, talent. Um, this one is actually quite dumb. Increases the damage of Earth Shock, uh, Elemental Blast, or Earthquake, or increases the healing of Healing Wave, Healing Surge, or Chain Heal by 8%. Like, why is this a note, right? Um, obviously, you're taking the talents. This should be included into the tooltip. Now, the two tip says, oh, they heal for something, and then you get 8% more because of this talent. Uh, quite useless, but I guess they have to fill up the notes. So, uh, it's there. We're going to heal for more. It's always going to be there. Like, that's not a choice that you, you get to make. So, uh, overall, this is just a tuning, right? This is just a tuning put into the hero, uh, hero talent tree. And then this one, uh, when the Ancestor expires, uh, they cast Elemental Blast, that's for Elemental. And for Restoration, when the uh, Ancestor expires, they cast Hydro Bubble to a nearby, a nearby injured alley. Now, there's not 
big clarity here what this Hydro Bubble does. And I suspect that some of the class are actually getting their talent trees revamped a little bit for the War Within. And maybe that's going to be a new node there. Maybe this is going to be a castable spell that you can use as an external. And um, we're going to get more detail of what it means there. But the two tip here says Hydro Bubble surrounds your target with a protective uh, bubble for 10 seconds. The shield absorbs incoming damage, but the absorbed amount decays fully over its duration. So the first question here is, what is this absorb amount, right? I don't think it's going to absorb all incoming damage. This is going to be extremely overpowered if that's the case, so it's not happening. And uh, if this amount is big, then that's great. Uh, if it's small and then it decays fully over its duration, so it means it starts high, but it doesn't absorb anything, then it just diminishes uh, by on its own. And if, if you get hit by with one second left on this buff, then you're going to get healed for nothing. Uh, that's that's a bit sus, I don't know. Uh, we, we need to know more uh, on how this works, uh, especially if that's a new spell that we're potentially getting. It's not going to be only the Ancestor casting it, uh, but we, we'll have to wait and see. If you have a ton of these, then obviously you're going to get a ton of uh, Hydro Bubbles, so overall this could be great. If uh, those are useless and you don't get them that much, let's say you're not running Unleashed Wife, then this is going to be useless. And then at the end, uh, you, you, we have already Nature Swiftness, and this one basically replaces Nature Swiftness, and it causes you to summon Ancestral uh, on your site. So that means you get an extra Ancestral every one minute or so when you use the Nature Swiftness. Overall, I guess that's a kind of okay trick compared to some of the other classes. It's very low impact, um, and as I said, my biggest concern is I don't think we don't know what the other tree is going to be for M+, but um, I don't think you're going to run this in N+. Unless those are like so overpowered that you actually pick up Unleash uh, Wife and you can like summon them every 15 seconds or so. Um, so from that perspective, low impact and maybe unusable for uh, M+, depending on the tuning. Uh, but if those things are supposed to be low impact, then, you know, um, I don't think uh, we're going to see ma many Restoration Shamans playing this unless the other tree is even, even worse than this. Um, all right, so I guess this kind of corresponds. There was another post by Blizzard where they talked about the uh, gameplay and the hero talents, and they say that they're keeping eye on the complexity, so they're trying not to add new buttons. Uh, they're try trying not to add uh, complex, complex maintenance buffs and things like that, which is my main scare for the um, hero talents. Like, uh, I want to see the enhancement talents because enhancement is probably one of the more complicated classes in the game so if they add more complexity on top of it it's like uh, uh it, it already is a rocket science right so now it requires even more um so i know that they're saying they're keeping an eye on this but i'm still scared that for some classes it may be just uh, way too much because there are classes that get new buttons new buffs and things to keep an eye on uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's my take. Uh, it's it's an okay tree. Uh, I don't think it's amazing. I don't think it's going to have big impact. I don't think it's going to be played in M plus at all. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens with uh, the next trees. Do let me know if you're still watching. Uh, what do you think for this tree in the comments below? And do you have some uh, high hopes for uh, the Totemic, which is enhancement restorations? I don't know. Enhancement and Totemic sounds a bit cringe uh but i guess in a, a week or two and uh, we're gonna know more all right let me know what you think in the comments below i'll see you guys in the next video until then take care bye bye and get out of here